Today we're going to be continuing our talk about the two-way range and what it's like to be in combat. Um, just a note, all the footage that you see is from 1st Battalion, 9th Marines, whether it was taken by myself with this exact helmet cam that I wore on this exact Mitch helmet that I had on my deployment, or if it's taken by other guys' helmet cams, or if it's taken by uh, other guys within the battalion who generously donated their footage to me um, during the course of the deployment. All the footage that you see is of 1st Battalion, 9th Marines on the 2011 and 2013 to 14 deployments. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. I want to thank ProxyBid and the True Nations that really help us out the channel and buy stuff like camera equipment that we desperately need to get these episodes to you. Thank you very much and hope you enjoy. So, I'd also like to put out there that every, every firefight we were in, every time we got shot at, it was almost as if it was completely different scenarios, situations every time. So there wasn't, there wasn't a sort of set portfolio of this is what happens when you get shot at. No, it was, well, we were here and they were there, or I had this emotion, or I was doing this, or I was talking to this guy. Like, and even to the mood changes. I mean, I remember the second firefight I was in, rounds came extremely close, and they had actually missed some of the guys, and they came really close to me and my friend Weaver, and me and Weaver just kind of sunk down in the ditch and looked at each other and we looked back up and then RLT came up from behind and he said, holy shit, Ryan and Weaver, you guys almost got smoked. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no shit, sir. Like, you're not the one getting hit like, in this ditch here. Like My feeling there was, yeah, that was pretty close. Oh, yeah. um, I almost got ghosted there, you know. <laughs> that almost oh, yeah. took around to the dome. But oh, then, yeah. no, so I remember I had this yeah. mood of like, oh shit, that was actually really close there. And because I could black. tell, because yeah. the, 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 I, I it's felt loud like, as fuck. If it's clo the closer it is, the louder it is. Like, you can't say, oh, it was two inches or it was a foot, but you know it's like, yes, it's yeah. too close for comfort. <laughs> yeah. so, so I'd say there's that, but then there's been other t moods that I've had when taken fire where we actually just started laughing. Yeah. And there, it's oh, like yeah. we're walking away on a patrol, we're just trying to get back to our trucks. And rounds start coming over, and they weren't as close to that first one. But everyone in the patrol just burst out laughing more, and we more have just turned around and just unloaded in that direction and kept on going on patrol. And then I also remember stuff in the middle where after an extremely long patrol, and I was getting into the A driver's seat in an MRAP, there was a round that came right over the truck, and I had to close. The door was completely open, and the round could have came into the truck. Maybe, maybe it would have gotten me or the driver. But my very mood at the time was, I just want to go back, screw you guys, and just closing the door. So in between those three moods of laughing in response to taking lethal fire, <laughs> or just completely Take nothing, the, or completely, or that was actually very down. close. Yeah. Like, there is no, there is no set, this is what you are going to feel and see and do when you take fire. It's, a mul it's actually a wide brush of, you know, multiple brushes yeah, of like gray. There's, yeah, there's there's a lot of emotions and laughing is definitely, I've ex I experienced that as well because hmm. similar, I mean, we it was more, it was a lot closer than we would have liked it to be. Two of the guys in my, in my team, King and Prak, I was across the wadi from them and I was gonna cross the wadi to get to them and there was a, a hole in the berm yeah. I guess you would call it in the berm of the wadi right. and the guy that was shooting at us like zeroed in through that hole. It was just a carving a, a caving in mm -hmm. of the berm mm -hmm. but from wherever he was at 300 400 meters away like he shot through there because he saw prack and king sitting down on the other side of the berm they thought they were under they had cover but no this guy saw them shot and the rounds went as i was like, trying to cross the rounds hit in between their legs next to their heads and i saw the impacts i was looking right at him i was five feet away mm -hmm. and if i had jumped i could have taken one of those rounds in the back as i was going to them it was it, i mean it was one of those surreal moments like holy shit they almost got schwacked i almost got schwacked if i had jumped a second prior to their side i would have taken i mean i'm not saying i would have died but i could have gotten hit afterwards you know i was talking to king about it and he actually filmed me to, to like get my reaction on his camera and I was laughing you know I was you know cracking jokes and telling him like dude that's the craziest shit I've ever seen like you about got your dome piece blown off <laughs> you know we were just using marine corps slang mm -hmm. you know that's usually reserved for the enemy but like we we're just using it for us dude, we almost got schwacked you know we almost got ghosted and I'm just laughing I mean I'm, I have this like, retard smile on my face 
and you would think like, you not understand the gravity of the situation. Yeah, yeah. It's like I I did. I totally understood the gravity of the situation, but I also understood that I'm going to go back there the next day mm-hmm. and I can't I can't like, sit there and be like, "Oh, I don't want that to happen again." Like because that's my job. My job is to go out there and for that to happen to me again. Mm-hmm. That is my job. Like, this is what I signed up to do. Yeah. So, you have... I mean, the sense of humor just kind of comes along with, like... That's just what you're going to do. Like, so you might as well enjoy it, you know, while you're doing it, you know? You can, at the end of the day, you can either laugh or you can cry. Yeah. And it makes more sense to laugh. It makes a lot more sense like to this. laugh. Yeah. yeah. So, going off of what you mentioned with not even knowing the location of where you're getting hit, if yeah. we had gotten better training on... You know how to identify where we're getting shot at from and how to better locate that and how to better work with that I think that could have really paid dividends down range and is something people don't often think about um, before going overseas because you think it's no, in the you, you go through you go through conventional yeah. warfare training to include in CACs like is, you the targets you know, are right there why would you yeah, why would you I do, ever you do think company level like civil war style assaults at CACs you know with machine guns like posted up on the hills mortars like shoot like battering down like the enemy yeah and then the infantry the the grunts moving in literally spread across this field while shooting their weapons and snipers shooting from up in the hills as well everything is known that's not how it is these guys don't have a base this is their base and this is our base this is where we meet the fight or we attack their base and they attack our but they don't have a base they they go back and blend in with the with the Population. You should talk a little bit about what it feels like to return fire. Because I think we covered what it's like to get shot at. But why don't you talk about what it feels like, the emotions that you have when you're pulling that trigger. And what you're in your head, what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. And what you want to happen. So, uh, from my perspective, I think it was it's just such a great release. Yeah, it Especially is. Especially the <laughs> first burst or the first <laughs> couple rounds. You send down range, take fire, and then you're like, okay, I'm hoping... I'm hoping where I'm shooting at is, you know, where we're going to we're yeah. getting hit from, but hoping against hope cuz what am I going to do? I'm not just going to sit here and not yeah, return you, fire. Yeah. That's the worst thing you can do. You know? I mean, the problem the problem with with that is the ROEs specifically said that positive you identification do not return positive fire unless you have PID, which means like they either you you see a guy with a gun and he's pointing it at you or shooting at you. Those were the ROEs. Like, yeah. and that, I mean, like I said, you almost never could establish PID. The best you could do is establish like pseudo PID, aka like dust cloud muzzle, muzzle flashes. And that's how we got away with returning fire and writing it up in the after action report so that we wouldn't get in trouble. Because we, you could get in trouble. You could literally get in trouble. For returning no, fire no, at nothing, at nothing, yeah, because you, I mean the rules, the rules were just draconian. I think, in my opinion, like you know, it got people killed. It got tons it got of guys people killed. killed. It got it got guys killed on your second deployment. You know, it got people like severely hurt during uh, our deployment that we did together. Like you know, because you know, like when you're out there with just your team or your platoon or your squad, as soon as the first round flies over your head. You're putting a wall of fire towards that muscle. Sometimes you hit them, sometimes you don't. But at least you send them a message that, dude, we're not just gonna like sit here and have you shoot at us. Take it, pretty much. Yeah, we're gonna like, if you dare shoot at us again, we will send a monstrous wall of fire your way. Like you were saying, it's such a relief. Like it's such a like release. It's like a a rush. Like a especially especially in the combat that we did in the patrolling we did, where we were essentially walking targets. Yeah, we we were bait. We were bait. Yeah. Talibate, hey, let me essentially. Yeah, talibate. <laughs> walking around and, oh, crack, 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 take fire half the day. Finally, you get to return fire. Yeah. You can't wait to shoot. Like, you cannot wait. Like, you, you, you start to wish for people to shoot at you. As soon as you leave the wire, you hope that, like, someone's shooting at you right away. So that way you don't have to walk very far, you know? <laughs> yeah, so you can yeah. just... <laughs> Let's get this over with, Yeah, man. Like, like, come on, man, like... <laughs> I'm I'm out the wire. Come on, and I know for a lot of guys in other, um, in other years and in other AOs besides ours, that happened a lot. Like they would be walking out of their patrol base, and the Taliban would just shoot at them right away. Yeah. So they didn't have to go very far. Like they would just literally 
run back inside the PB <laughs> and get Pretty the two forties up and just start like rocking shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But for us, we often had to go look for it. And there was particular areas that were more prone to uh, Taliban attacks than others. So. But there's definitely situations, um, and I've, I've only been in one of these situations. So, I mean, I can't speak for everybody that's been to Afghanistan and been through the type of combat that we've been through. But mm-hmm. um, where you, you know... That you 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 have this eerie feeling that it's coming, like you know it's I would coming. Agree with you that you too. just there's there's, it's just something in the wind, like you know you. Some mm, sometimes some, sometimes, sometimes right, it, you yeah. know sometimes then, it was tangible. Whereas it, it's very say, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's there's definitely clues. There's definitely clues. People started disappearing. They were just all of a sudden like the kids were. I mean, the kids were gone. The women were gone. There's just a few dudes and. There seemed to be like a, ten- a tension in the air, like people were milling about quicker and trying to trying to get home quicker, yeah. like trying to you know like like something's about to happen, kind of a thing. And that was just it, it was that discipline. And I know it sounds cliche and probably heard it from other people. Like when the kids and the women disappear, that's when you're about to get hit. Mm-hmm. But that that's exactly what happened. Like you know, people just started disappearing. And all of a sudden, it was just us and the wind, you know. And I, I look over at, at my buddy Thompson, and I'm like, dude, we're, we're about to get hit. Like, I just had this feeling. Like, I had this feeling of, dude, we're gonna, we're gonna get hit. Like, and it's gonna be like, it's gonna be big. Like, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be a regular like pop shot or like burst or something. Like, we're gonna be here for a while. Like, get ready to. Dig some trenches, get your entrenching like, tool, so, <laughs> and crack. Like you heard the crack, and like my instinct, I went down to one knee. I was like, Did, "Was that an ND?" And then that got put to rest right away because the burst <laughs> soon followed. Like so, ka ka ka. I was like, "Holy shit, contact!" Like so, we just we're we're all trying to like you know assess where it's coming from, and. You just couldn't. Like, you kind of knew that it was from, like, this side of the earth. But, like, (laughs) this side of the earth. (laughs) You know, so uh, the guys in the field, like, were were laid down on their stomachs. And I would see them, and there's rounds hitting the road, like, right behind them. Like, right where they're at. Like, I was like, holy fuck, that's close. Like, it's right there. And then, so I, like... I look over, I look around the berm, I try to kind of, because we were all trying, you know, doing the, you know, like, trying the turkey to, peak, yeah, yeah. the turkey peak, you know, trying to figure out, like, where it's coming from, and, like, all of a sudden, crack, like, right by my fucking dome piece, like, <laughs> loud as fuck, yeah, loud as fuck, like, I was, like, momentarily deaf in that ear, like, my ear was ringing, and I was like, Jesus, like, like I said earlier, like, that must have been close. Like, <laughs> that shit was close. So, I mean, yeah, and it, it, the, the rest, I mean, the rest...